This is Get Real with Andy, episode 33 or something. Let's talk about getting real. You know, get real. Let's get real. What does get real mean? Get real means be honest. Stop complaining. Stop whining. Have integrity. Get to what you need to get to. Feel what you need to feel. Admit that you're mortal. You know, admit your limitations. Confess your transgressions. Make amends. You know, that's what Get Real is all about. Time is precious. There is no, there is no extra time. And I'm not any less alive in what I consider in between times than I am during, you know, quote, real times. You know, when I'm with somebody that I really want to be with, then I feel like, oh, this is real. And then when I'm driving in my car, it's like less than, no, that's bullshit. Every single moment, every single moment is the same opportunity to be alive and to be real. You know, when I worked in the hospital, I had an opportunity to actually be with people. I think I mentioned this before, when, when they were alive, and then I also saw them after they were dead. And it's a significant difference. I mean, it's really a significant difference. I noticed that the the thing that I take for granted when I'm with other people is the rising and the falling of the chest as we breathe. And it's really noteworthy to be with somebody who's deceased, who's dead. That chest <clears throat> is not rising and falling. It's just not happening. When my mother was on her deathbed, I, I sort of did a vigil and I was there all day as long as I could. And I would go home and take breaks. Um, and then it got to the point where I went home to get a few hours of sleep and I got a call from the hospital saying that my mother had passed. So I went there, it was about one in the morning or something. And there she was, or there she wasn't. You know, there was the body lying on the bed. And of course, I recognized her as my mother, but there was that absence of the rising and the falling of the chest. It was just phenomenal. It was stark, sobering reality. And then I believe uh, when I said my goodbyes, the next time uh, it was at her funeral and I didn't see her body anymore, but I saw the box, that casket being lowered into the ground. And then we threw some dirt on top of it. And I tell you, that's that's something. That's I think we have funerals as a way to not only honor the deceased, but as a reminder to ourselves of, about the ephemeral nature of our lives. So get real, be responsible, you know, to, to be in the world as if I'm a victim and things are just being done to me. It's just such bullshit. It is much more powerful to be in the world taking full responsibility for everything that happens, whether that seems realistic or not. You know, I've heard people say, well, how did I create that? And as woo-woo as it sounds, and as much as I've resisted that because it doesn't seem fair sometimes, it seems like over-responsible, but there is something powerful and empowering about taking responsibility for what's going on. That means I'm responsible for changing things. You know that serenity prayer, but it's something like accept the things I cannot change to change the things that I can and the wisdom to know the difference. But what about, what about give me the strength to change the things that I can't accept? You know, there was a time when I was doing the healing circle at Hippocrates and they were repairing the roof of the building. And these the tiles were heavy duty ceramic tiles and they were ripping them off and throwing them into a dumpster. And it was really very, very loud and disruptive. And the people who lived in that building uh, were complaining that I can't even go back to my room and take a nap. This is this is terrible. And so some people in the group 
recommended to them. They said, you know, listen, you're here for healing. Don't let that disturb you. Don't let you don't let yourself get riled up. Just go someplace else to rest. And then there was another faction of people in the group that said, you know what, you're paying big bucks to be here. Just go complain and tell management to stop the repairs so that you can rest. And then they were bickering back and forth, saying, no, 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 you shouldn't. Don't disturb yourself. It's not worth it. And then suddenly, <laughs> at a certain point, everybody in the group looked at me like, Andy, tell us, oh, wise counselor, who has the correct approach here? And so I said, well, listen, let's let the people who are saying do something, let's let them do something. And the rest of us will just wait here. And so actually during the healing miracle, this small faction of people, maybe five or six people, got up and went to the uh, management, you know, to the CEO's office. We waited and we talked about it. And then suddenly they came back and made an announcement. They said, you know what? The manager was very sympathetic. He said, of course, we'll adjust the work schedule. We need to change the roof because it's got, you know, some holes in it or something. But we will accommodate your rest schedule. And so the people who were saying, don't hassle yourself, they were they were humbled. It was like, oh, maybe we can do something. So I'm not saying there's a single formula. But there is a time to take action and there's a time to not focus on action, but more to focus on being. And that's what Get Real is all about. It's having the wisdom to discern when to do what. You know, I believe in gut feelings. I believe in intuition. And I believe in really getting to it. If you want to get through it, you've got to get to it. And that involves being really honest with where you're at. It may not be the final resting place, for God's sake. The final resting place is, you know, that's what funerals are. That's the final resting place. But the final resting place in terms of who I am and what I do, I mean, that's completely flexible and open to change. Ralph Waldo Emerson, where he said, consistency is the hobgoblin of little minds. I believe it was Mahatma Gandhi said, I'm con committed to truth, not consistency. And if you put those two together, it's an awesome realization. I'm committed to truth, not consistency, because consistency is the hobgoblin of little minds. That means I'm growing and changing and dynamic. And I have the freedom to be inconsistent, to be true to my ever-growing, ever-loving, changing self. All right, listen, because the theme of my book is really get real. The theme of my life that I'm focusing on these days is get real. It's so important. And I need reminders. And I need a good kick in the tush. And I need a good uh, level of inspiration and encouragement. I admit it, I do get discouraged because things are so big and overwhelming and I feel so small and blah, blah, blah. But that's just bullshit, lies that I've grew, grown up with, that I have somehow subliminally and then not so subliminally told myself. And now my main message to myself that I'm sharing with you is to get real. It's important. And we can get real together. That's when it gets so high and so beautiful. Okay, let's get real. Love you.